Greetings, students. Welcome back to Book of Dawn IOP Academy. I'm tormented by gnomes, your game master. Once again, after the break, we've got Leg Day, Lemon Kiwi, and Necra. When last we left our heroes, Garnet and Ariana, along with Inril Untermaler, uh, Master Elnau, and six wardens. No, five wardens? Math is hard. Uh, five <laughs> wardens. Five wardens, because you have to teleport. Yeah, okay, yeah. Five wardens are all flying on magic carpets after an unsuccessful teleport attempt to reach the Bronthen camp, where Garnet's mother and former betrothed, still technically betrothed, are at risk of assassination by fanatics sent by a sub-faction of the dragon tribes of Okarthal, who blame them for their campaign of ruthless investigation ever since the banishment of Garnet. Meanwhile, Athelor has implored the Dokelfar sage to renew the mind blank on him that steals away his uncle's influence and help the rest of the party by bringing him into the fray in order to stop the assassination. Right before that, the two of them are traveling to the Tower of Divination, where Master Rednop is attempting to scry to find Una. Upon arrival within the cozy, dark but warmly lit at the same time, heavy with, with tapestries and, and cushions and a sort of snug vibe Rednop's office, you see him gazing into the scrying sphere, the crystal ball on his desk, as he frowns and gazes deep within. And I need to look up the limitations on crystal balls real quick. <laughs> Just to see if but I thought they see work. all. Well, it's, it's all about... Oh, I can't give it away. There, there's a factor here that may or may not be a limitation. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Red knob. We need your help. He looks up his brow furrowed and says, Yes, Master Sage. Um, I can't find him anywhere. The, uh, the, the imp at the lore. What does she call her imp? Una. Una. No. Una's not here. In the mortal world. Can you look elsewhere? Not with this. He looks at the, the sphere on his desk and frowns. This is restricted only to the, the kingdom where I currently dwell. I would have to take it somewhere else in order to search those places. There are other methods. Uh, if we have the time. But is your, is your need urgent? Both, both these needs are urgent. Where should my priority lie? The sage will say... Uh, Sorry, go ahead, Athlor, if you're going to speak up first. If you can look on this plane, we need to find where Garnet's mother is. Mm. Marison Tosaka. Mm -hmm. He looks within. Takes him a moment. I see it. And the sage reaches down and touches him on the side of his temple. And that same blue dream light flares in the back of his eyes for a moment. She draws it away and places it against the back of her own head. She stops for a moment, nods and says, that will do, Master Rednop. And then she will go ahead and take Athelor's hand, tap her, her uh, hands against the ground, light flares up around the two of you. And I'm gonna have you roll percentile dice, please because this is still not a guarantee. I'm scared. 38. <laughs> 38. Oh, dear. She let me take the quill, right? Yes, you had asked about that. She is going to authorize usage of the quill in this case. Nice. Okay. All right. The teleportation goes awry. As bits and pieces of you end up in places that they were not intended to. Both you and the sage take 19 points of force damage. Are you still up? Yes. Okay. Just about. Roll again. Uh, okay. Roll until you die. <laughs> 97. 97. Okay. So. We turn once again to 
our party that is on the magic carpets. You can see the Bronthan armies far down below. This is sick. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Go the Bronthan armies everything. far down below as the fog continues to roll in. And the Bronthan war camp, the elite camp here at the top, they built this, this uh, lift to bring them up and down. There are guards posted on either side. Doesn't look like they were expecting an enormous attack from the air, but they do have a huge war horn off on the western side with one guard posted on it, monitoring it. Inside the camp, there's multiple tents and, like I said, a wooden palisade. And rising over the wooden palisade are ballistas with guards of Bronthan soldiers manning all of them. They are currently turned in your direction as you approach. Untermaler holds one hand up and projects an illusion an enormous golden sphere with a spire within, an abstract symbol of the academy. Essentially saying, it's cool, we come in peace, please don't shoot us. You see they remain on guard, but they don't shoot you and they don't blow the horn. The carpets descend to the ground level and a lot of you are dropped off or a lot of you land, and I'm just going to go ahead and pack these up. And the Bronthans immediately confront you and say, Ioff, why are you here? What business have you? Barring any of you speaking up. We come with dire news. The life of Marison and Pevom are in danger from a plot. On your word, Untermaler? On my word. Very well. Come with us. And they're going to escort you. Garnet, you have not been around Ronthans of the army like this since the last time you saw your father. And they're going to go ahead and escort you up. The wardens fall in, forming a defensive perimeter. Untermal is going to lead the way. And Elnau is at his side, and she indicates for you two to be inside the formation, protected by the wardens on all sides, uh, unless you want to do something different. Okay. As you continue to walk through, you see priests wearing all the garb of Zalar and Phoenix Knights in their shining gold-plated armor, emerging from the tents left and right, speaking among themselves and watching the lot of you with grim suspicion and curiosity. None of them seem to immediately recognize you, Garnet. Just kind of keeps her head down and mm -hmm. follows the pack. They lead you inside to this tent. The soldiers who arrive say, Dignitaries from Ioth Academy, they say they have a warning for Marison. The Phoenix Knights will take a moment and one of them will step inside the tent. The two soldiers take up guard in either position. A long moment passes, the fog still blotting out the sun. You can feel the seconds passing with each beat of your heart, Garnet. Ariana, as you're standing, the tension in the air, it's almost flowing through the fog itself, clinging around you. I don't know if you've ever been on a battlefield before. And even though this isn't quite a battlefield, it's on the edge, even at this distance. The chants and cries of the Okarthal tribesfolk down below echo up. So, fighting Vindur doesn't, like, that's okay. so different. Okay. 
it, it's different. It probably would honestly be scarier. Fighting the Knights of Terra Nimbus would be scarier. But that was a different kind of battle. That wasn't a massed army. That was like flying raids and magical destruction. <laughs> So, uh, I, I think the, the most analogous thing would probably be Anachronus' invasion where we had yeah. board in combat all over the academy. Yeah, you're no stranger to violence in battle at this point. It's mostly just the scale of the number of people. That's what's different about this. But you've probably been in worse danger before. And you brought some extra snacks with you, just in case. There's another uh, Ariana's snacks in play, by the way. Yay! <laughs> Let's go! We might need that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stress <Yeah>. snacking. <laughs> Hi, mom. Eating bacon. <laughs> <laughs> the Phoenix Knight emerges from the tent and says, General Marison, we'll see you. Not your entire delegation. That's too many armed warriors in one place. Untermaler will go ahead and step forward. Elnal will step forward, and she's going to look, turn over her shoulder to look at Garnet. She doesn't uh, say anything. The question is behind her eyes. I think she'll, she's been probably, like, squeezing Ariana's hand and, like, worry and stress, and will step forward and kind of gently bring Ariana with her as, like, a okay. companion. <laughs> Aaron is like taking her hand, but also like looking around, like, wow. <laughs> oh, Nate. Okay. As the two of you step forward to enter the tent, there is a flash of blue light inside the tent. No, not inside the tent, just outside the tent. <laughs> As the sage and Athalor appear from nowhere. Not alarming at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the guards around immediately are spears up and everything. Untermaler will raise a hand. They're with us. They come under the auspices of the academy. Quill. <laughs> it's, it's a quill. <laughs> You know Unsharpened. better than to consider wielders of magic unarmed. Luckily, that's not me at the moment. <laughs> okay. A sage is just going to take in her surroundings for a moment and frown as if something's bothering her. Surrounding the air. And Athelor, you are just in time to see Untermaler, Elnau, vanish into the tent, and Garnet and Ariana are about to follow. What do you do? Uh, I'm looking at the Phoenix Guard to see if they recognize the Sage. They don't seem to recognize the Sage. There's no, Im there's no immediate recognition, although they are wearing a lot of armor. Mm. Kind of hard to tell. Athlor at the moment is going to maintain the uh, the outward persona to those who are unaware in the camp that he is essentially the sage's attaché at this at this point, like the traveling companion. So that when she gets the clout check, he'll be like, "I'm with her." <laughs> okay. Wait, do we see Athlor <laughs> yeah, arrive, or are like, we about to head in? Uh, Untermaler heads in after seeing those two he heads in you're about to head in when he teleports in so it's your call what to do before you enter the tent i thought master like oh my god you want to come in like you want to come in i'll wait with her i borrow so so your parents don't die well parent that you have to say that out loud okay <laughs> fireball this <laughs> no, no. On the RLF. Oh. You just say the word. Okay. All right. Oh, healing best. Thank you so much. Yeah, go ahead and whoever wants to cash that. By force. In. Inside. Scarred since the last time that you saw her, though not since the last time you saw her in vision, clad from her 
feet all the way up to her neck in the resplendent armor of the Phoenix Guard with an, a tabard bearing all the colors that flame can, the, all the colors that flame can appear in, a spear emblazoned on it, her helmet under her arm, tables on the ground with maps charting the lands around Ioth Academy, the terrain elevation with choke points noted and outlying uh, defenses and layout of this refugee camp marked on it, along with pieces, colored stones on this map, indicating the location of all the different dragon tribe camps. This camp, this tent is humbly but well appointed with two separate beds, both of them with curtains surrounding them, a basin for water, a small shrine that has been set up dedicated to the Sun Rider. And there are two people in here. Marison Tosaka, the general of the Phoenix Knights. Again, her face scarred from where Mirik struck her. And a young man that has grown significantly since the last time that you saw him. Aww, he's so cute. <laughs> Wearing his armor uh, with the, what befits a squire of the Phoenix Knights, and with a sword at his side made from the spine of a wind serpent. The two of them are looking up at Untermaler and Elnau as they enter. The enormous Minotaur has to duck under and his robes obscure everyone behind him for a moment. As Marison says, let's get this plot out of the way, Ioth. Elna will say, my apologies. I am not the Archmage. I am the Regent Headmistress of the Academy. Ika Elna, I know who you are. You speak for Ioth. Let's hear of this plot. We have dangers enough surrounding us. Pevon peeks his head around the enormous Minotaur. And first, he sees Ariana. And he, he gives you a, a look for a moment. Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> I just wave at him and stare. <laughs> Garnet, what are you doing? Am I a hidden or? Uh, I mean, I can't just see him? you you can see him. You're starting to see like his curly hair poke around. You caught a glimpse of him a, a moment when Utramala was moving in. I think she's like trying to take advantage of the giant figure of okay. Utramala and just is like holding her scroll of pedigree and her Bronthan mm -hmm. ring to just like ready to like show whoever <laughs> is. But she's just standing there with like her head down, just kind of shaking okay. and holding Ariana's hand okay. or whatever if she let go. <laughs> All right. General Tosaka. It's good to see you again. I wish it was under different circumstances. Some of our students have learned of assassins heading here at this very moment to take advantage of the chaos and end your life. Elno pipes up the specifics are slightly sensitive. She looks over her shoulder for a moment and makes eye contact with Garnet. If she's looking up, if she's looking at the ground, no, no eye contact. She's is looking made. at the ground. <laughs> okay. She will briefly message you a whispered message spell. Garnet. Need you focused, okay? You are why they're here. Are you here? She like nods and starts like leaning to the side of Untamaler to see if she can what she sees, because I guess she hasn't seen anything <laughs> past him yet. Okay. He at that exact moment steps aside. So as you're sort of like 
peeking around. Suddenly he moves out of the way unexpectedly, uh, possibly catching you off guard, revealing both Ariana and Garnet. And Hevon freezes and his eyes go enormous. Marison stares at you for a moment, blinking as if the one eye that got hit with Merrick's magic is, is tricking her. She... She's like staring back and looks at Ariana and everyone and oh, this is real. This is, this is real. This is real. And... Ariana like pushes her forward a little bit. <laughs> Or like pat on the butt, like, come on. <laughs> and then uh, she approaches mm -hmm. mom, pretty, pretty hurried, a little hesitant. Mm -hmm. And she thought of like, through this whole time was trying to think about what she wanted to say. And oh, she's so pretty. Well, the back of her head is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, can you turn around? <laughs> <laughs> she just says, uh, mom. And tries to look up at her to see how she's now that she's like face to face, how she's being received, like what emotion or warmth she's giving off. Her armor clinks and bends as she kneels, as she goes down just a little bit. You're, you've grown since last she saw you. She doesn't have to go all the way down on her knees, although in this inflexible armor she might. She reaches down so she can look directly into your face and holds up a mailed gauntlet covered with dents and scars from warfare, from years of warfare. And with those metal-clad fingers, she's just going to reach up and very, very gently touch your face as if she can feel it. And then she's just going to grab you and pull you in. Aww. And as like before she pulls in, she'll be like, I'm... I'm so sorry. And then as like she's finishing the sorry, it's the tight hug, and she obviously gives the tight hug back. Mm -hmm. And again, it's through this plate mail armor. It's it's, yeah. it's cold. <laughs> it's not even like the warmth of a mother's arms. You feel that radiating through, but it's this metal, this gilded golden metal of battle that is wrapped around you instead against the robes that you wear from the academy. And she is shaking, not uttering a single sound, but shaking uncontrollably. Uh, Pevom, Ariana, as you're watching this, Pevom is looking on with a, an expression you swear you've seen before. It's like, it's like if Garnet had said yes to Cryus to go to the Green Gala. <laughs> Except it's there's more backbone to it. It's this look of, of of shock and like loss of word. You know how Cryus gets all babbly and such. Except that this is somebody who's held a sword and who's fought in battles and has been through worse. And so it's going on behind his head. It's going on inside of his head, but his outer countenance. He's like. And they're not stiff as a board, but just sort of in this almost at attention position. Is is this the guy Garnet was betrothed to? Insight check? Looks yes. like winning's back on the menu, <laughs> boys. Did you, say, did you say that out loud or are you asking the dungeon master? No, asking you. Yeah, roll an insight dungeon check. Dungeon master. Did a sage of Athelor enter? Said... They have not entered yet. No, no, no. <laughs> a natural. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> dude, like, dude, this guy's hot. I feel, hey, I feel like I would have actually said that out loud with a natural one. <laughs> All right. If you want to do that with a natural one, you just suddenly you don't realize that your brain has connected to your mouth. <laughs> is this the guy? Hey, who's... Garnet. Were, were you supposed to marry this dude? Oh, 
she she's like blocking this out because probably just armor and not <laughs> listening. Not listening. <laughs> not listening. Ma Marison doesn't even seem to notice this at all. She is rattling inside of her armor and and, and like clenching her jaw to avoid breaking out into sobs. Uh, Hevon, on, on the other hand, it's like he just got slapped out of a reverie or a dream. He looks at you for a moment, Ariana, not horrified, but just a little bit, uh, a little bit confused. And then El now is going to stare daggers down at you. <laughs> what I say? <laughs> Can I instant? Do I know that I said this out loud? <laughs> it takes you a moment, but yes, you do realize it after a moment. Oh. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> and once the, the hug is done, like she's clearly got tears down her face, and she immediately tries to go to like explain everything but it's i was saved and she stops at the saved part and mm -hmm. kind of had this whole script of what she's believed in for so many years and kind of has this like empty stare of trying to see how everything went down and sees all these memories flying by and hears voices again and i was taken but they made me believe you you left me because i thought you never came back because I, I couldn't save him. I couldn't save anyone. And I, I think they wanted me to, they wanted to take me all along. And if I didn't go, they, they'd still be. And she continues to cry. Marison says in a trembling voice, breaking for the first time, perhaps in four years. I would have burned every kingdom on this earth to find you. She's like smiles and I, but I couldn't come back. I was, I was at IOTH Academy for a while and I, I, I couldn't come back to you even if I wanted to because I, I failed you mob I'm I'm a failure shh, Bronta shh. Oh. oh you're here you haven't failed anyone oh darn it oh. just need you to be okay that's all Nobody, she looks up at Untermaler for a moment, and there's a sharp change. The voice of the general kicks in, and there is no other reason why my daughter could not be returned to me other than her own guilt. For five years, Elna will say, Garnet's true identity was shrouded by powerful magic. Not even we could. You couldn't? Ioth couldn't? The greatest institute of magical learning in the four kingdoms? And you expect me to believe you couldn't have delivered her back to me at any time. That not even your and your infinite wisdom could possibly perceive that the person I was Marching on the land for was with you. She is now standing up. I mean, this is... Don't be mad at them. It, it was my choice and my, my guilt and all they... They gave me everything. They gave me housing. They, they've trained me. They've taken care of me. They've protected me. Didn't give you your birthright. Enough. 
The assassin's blades are drawn even now, General. We can resolve this later. First, we must see to your protection. Outside the tent, Athelor, you hear this. You hear raised voices, and your elven ears are good enough to perceive everything I just yelled. Uh, Athel's looking to the sage if, like, we should, uh, go in? It's as if she doesn't hear you. She has her head tilted, and she's looking out into the fog. I follow her gaze. Full perception check. With disadvantage, because of all the fog. You don't see anything. You, you can hear the distant sounds of, of the crowds far below, muffled as it goes through this fog that covers the land like a blanket. Whatever it is that she perceives, it's as if it's rooting out even the wrath of the General of the Phoenix Knights and your question. Something moves askew. Something's not right. She reaches out her hand as if she can touch the fog and spins it in her fingers. Something's wrong. This isn't dragon magic. This fog Infernal is not magic. She looks down at you and answers. Axel tries to grab her lantern <laughs> and shine it towards the fog. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you reach down and you grab the lantern and you hold it up. Your eyes adjust to its glare. And in the scintillating blue light of the lantern, the fog itself changes, turning a rusty crimson color, like old blood, flecks of old blood floating in the wind. It doesn't smell like the blood of the Earth Mother that you craved for so long. And as the light pierces through, a smell, a coppery tang of spilled out blood and that old smell of rusted blades reaches your nostrils. After all, as sheepishly as possible, like puts a lantern back down mm -hmm. and he raises up the, the quill with one hand and starts like drawing a crosshair on the fog in the direction that uh that the sage is looking, and then puts on his most authoritarian voice and shouts over towards the ballista guys that can rotate from around here. Mm -hmm. Bronthans, for your general, you may want to stand ready. They look down at you. We always stand ready. <laughs> but they turn the ballista around and point it over in the direction that you were looking. Inside the tent, General Marison seems less concerned about the threat on her own life and more upset with the fact that she's been on this campaign, this quest for so long, and her daughter's just been at school the entire time. He's very glad you are all right. He's not upset with you at all, Garnet. But all of the lives that have been lost all of the places that they've searched, all of the dust they've kicked up, and this entire time you had her. I could scarcely believe it when news of the third miracle reached us. And here she is. Unless either of you speak up, Untermaler is going to take point to try to defuse the situation. She'll probably like step aside and maybe go mm -hmm. walk up to Pavam as <laughs> tensions are rising in there. And just, uh, I think she'll probably like walk up and smile and place her hands on his probably rosy cheeks at this point. <laughs> and 
There's a little bit of stubble there. There's a little peach fuzz. Aw, how cute. And she's very, like, she's looking at him with a lot of, like, marvel and pride. Like, this is, like, wow. This this is you now. And I think she, like, goes to, like, kind of touch the armor and, like, oh, this is, like, legit stuff. And leans in for a hug eventually. And I didn't think I'd ever see you again. And before he, like, continues, just, wow, you've grown up. You, you're, you're everything I knew you'd become and more. I named my sword after you. Really? Show me, show me. <laughs> and he'll, he'll go ahead and draw this sword made from the spine of a winged serpent, magically treated, and the, the, eye, the sides of it sharpened to a fine point solidified and connected and the hilt is also carved from that same bone but with wrappings around it rich leather wrappings and you can see written down the side in ignan primordial runes is your name cool i always thought it was going to help me find you or avenge you you just found me instead Can't believe it's you. Can't believe it's you. You, you've grown up too. Um, he, he Tell me about your adventures. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to? Wow. Uh, can I offer you a seat? He'll he'll pull up like a nice chair. <laughs> Sits. <laughs> okay listens and he he has some like fresh spiced tea set out and he's taking a moment and you can tell he's remained in the circles of power perhaps even closer to the seat of power than he was when he was merely your betrothed now that he is marison's squire and so his words are more carefully chosen even if he's in a state of shock right now he's been learning the art of uh court craft if you will what it and takes she, to... uh, when she Go says ahead. she like quickly gets up, grabs Ariana's arm, and gently pulls her to <laughs> sit, also sit with us and mm -hmm. to let because she might have been caught in the crossfire of adults mm -hmm. arguing. So she's like, yeah. okay, let, why don't we all go over here? <laughs> <laughs> this Ariana's is Ariana. Along for the ride, I'm like, huh? This is Pavam, Ariana, Pavam, Pavam, Ariana. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah. You you guys are marrying, right? So tell me about your adventures. <laughs> Vom launches into an explanation of what happened after your father was killed and you went missing. They were out there to meet with the Dune Riders and to meet with some of the dragon tribes nearby. And suspicion immediately fell on them. Evon gave up everything that he was working on, everything that he was pushing towards to join the search for you and just ended up uh, taking after sort of his dune rider heritage, learning to ride across the sands and joined the hunt for you. And it took a while for him to persuade Marison to take him as her squire because she was still, she couldn't look at him for months because of the memories it just but he went off on his own hunted down his own winged serpent swore the oath of the phoenix knights and ever since then he's been traveling with her learning the art of strategy and of war they've been they've been looking for infernals they've been looking for traitors because somebody gave away gave you away to the Iron Butchers. And so their entire time, they've been traveling from land to land, searching for warlocks and cultists and spies, serving the designers or the Iron Empire, anyone who might know what happened to you. And even if they don't, if they're in league with the same people who killed your father and took you away, then that was it for them. Nevon has killed some people. He, he is not an unblooded warrior. He doesn't go into huge detail on that. 
uh, but he doesn't shy away from it either. He's been in war, mostly skirmishes, and he'll, he'll tell you all about them with a little bit of the excitement of, of childhood back in the day in the storytelling. Um, he also adds that he still hasn't beaten your mom at Pillars. Come on. Well, maybe if I'd had a little more time for lessons with you, I could have done it. You always needed me. She continues to listen and doesn't really interject too much. Mm -hmm. As they continue to talk, you hear the argument going on, but it, it sounds like it's starting to wind down, but there's still an absolute chill between them, a barely contained raging fire on your mother's part that is only being restrained because she is first and foremost, after a mother, she is a general and a tactician. Athelor, give me another perception check, please. With disadvantage, because fog. Even with uh, lantern fog? Uh, the, lantern, the lantern would cut through that, that's correct. So normal? Normal, a flat roll, please. My eyes! Wow, okay, well, that wow. happened. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay. As this is all happening, as the conversation continues and the sage gazes out into, you see something, a brief shadow, a brief swirl of movement in the fog up on this cliff. Athel continues to try and use the magic of the quill to like mark targets. Mm -hmm. I see movement. You have scouts out there? He loudly addresses all the Bronthans. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything. As they all look in that direction. The sage holds up the lantern and calls forth its power. And it washes over the spells of invisibility and casts into stark relief. Incoming! <laughs> <laughs> you hear Athelor, everyone inside the tent, you hear Athelor shout outside. And everyone springs immediately into action. You all know what to do. Oh, initiative. It's a lot of people. Mm, no, that's not going to work. Let's do... Let's do this. Yeah, we'll do this. This is going to be one of those big scenes that's taking a moment to set up, by the way. So I apologize. <laughs> we got some technicals. Mm -hmm. uh, while, while you're setting this up, can Athelor have the action as a person come at calling in call, uh, incoming? It doesn't require yeah. any action on your part. Yeah, okay, so Athelor, as he does that, since he's marking targets of the quill, mm -hmm. he, uh, he sketches up in the air the same runes that he's got emblazoned on his chest that say Arcane, and two of each of the letters swoop down onto the chest of the sage, and then two come through the roof of the tent and slap onto Elnau and Garnet, and each of them receives Bless. Ooh. Ooh. Neat. Go ahead and give yourself a little bless icon if you would. What's that? What's that? It do? gives you plus one d4 on your attack rolls and saving throws. And Ooh. I need a concentration magic. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that. Oh, <laughs> uh, like a little green icon on yourself or something. Oh you yeah, yeah. Your yeah. token just, little. Pop yeah, I just had to uh, submit this being casted at level one because it's part of my storm touched abilities. And then I can. Mark myself as concentrating. And the strength of Morco flows through all of you. You all have advantage on constitution checks, uh, which includes saving throws, so concentration spells. And each of you roll 2d6 and give yourself that many temporary hit points. Ooh. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn, get it all now. Am I missing anybody? Did I get the Untermaller? 
And does the Intermaller have any special abilities that pertain to his initiative? Because he's a war mage. War. He Ooh. does. He gets yeah, plus yeah. five. What is it good oh, for? I, I, actually, since, I, since I've got spell slots, but no other way to use them, I'm going to cast mm -hmm. it at third level. So there you go. Intermaller there you go. And, uh, and the general both get blessed as well. Nice. All right. And you said uh, the, the sage got it too, right? Yep. Uh, the sage, uh, Garnet, uh, and our, our big war mages. Okay. Our, our DPS machines. <laughs> okay. Let's get the clerics in here. Another patented, tormented by gnomes, overly complicated combat scene. This is the part where I try to kill as many characters as I can. Huh? How are you? you said that with your outside voice. <laughs> Oopsie whoopsie. <laughs> Intrusive Oops, thoughts. <laughs> okay, I think I've got everybody in this. I just need to see if Foresight gives any specials on initiative. Uh, nope. You can't be surprised. Okay. Where is Ariana? Where's Ariana? Ariana. I don't see you in the in the order, Ariana. What'd you roll for initiative? Oh, that's because I'm a bot and I forgot. <laughs> click on <laughs> click on your token first. It's okay. I didn't yeah. roll the, and then I hit initiative and it'll put you in the order. Yeah, I was like, I did this last time, but it didn't work last time. So but it worked this. Did it work? Uh it did work. Uh that roll didn't work, but it worked. If it, it's okay. Okay. The assassin, the Bethotlo Slayers go first. Athelor, your quick thinking has allowed you to cast that blessed spell and mm -hmm. prevented the party from being surprised. Oh, oh go 20 perception. <laughs> All of the Bethotlo Slayers are under the effects of a greater invisibility spell meaning that they can attack without breaking invisibility. As long as they are in the lantern's light, everyone can see them. Which to me says they don't want to be in the lantern's light anymore. Hmm. Okay. I know what they're going to do. Calling upon their dragon magic, one of the Bothotlo Slayers casts slow. I need Athelor, the Sage, and four, uh, and Ariana's inside the tent, and four mm -hmm. wardens to roll wisdom saving throws, DC 13. Pog. <laughs> You are slowed. Yin and yang, a, baby. A slow icon on yourself. Ooh, get it. Random guy. <laughs> yeah, it's queen. All right, two of them are slowed. Is there a snail icon? I wish there was a snail icon. Maybe. I'll just put the clock. The clock will... Oh, I'm going to put this little slime icon. No, okay, I'm going to need the slime icon for later. All right, I'll do the clock. So the slow spell, and I need to roll for you. Your speed is halved. You have minus two armor class and dexterity, and you can't take reactions, and you cannot use both the bonus action and an action on your turn. Uh, did you add? No, you rolled a natural one. It didn't matter. Yeah, I don't think it matters about the plus four. A sage gets a plus four, though. Yes. Oh, plus one d4. Oh, yeah, that's true. Which she's actually going to need. Oh, Plus one before it automatically succeeds. But wow, that actually would have mattered. The blessings, they matter. <laughs> Good job. Okay. No. no. Is this it? Okay, yeah, they're just going to keep the in the invisibility up. Ooh, can I do this? Yo, 
yeah, I can do this. Okay. The second Bothotlo Slayer is going to make some magical gestures and cast Reposition. Teleporting. Three allies. 30 feet. In the location of their choosing. This one acted. This one acted. No, this one hasn't acted. And they are going to charge forward. One of them is going to get close enough to attack the sage. And is going to use... Bardic Inspiration to give his friend a boost. And then... Yeah, a Psychic Blades attack. So, attacks with a Corrosive Blade. Holy God. But has disadvantage because the Sage has Foresight active, so that's a miss. On the other side, you hear... Actually, no. Yeah, these ones, they're all just going to rush over as fast as they can. Parkour, 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 parkour. Around the Brontham parkour. Parkour, <laughs> parkour, 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 parkour. Around the Brontham parkour. All right, that's it for them. Master Elnau's turn. Elnau is going to swap initiatives with Garnet because I don't want to take a million action figure turns. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> I was contemplating. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'm being called upon. So we're, what, we're, like, completely surrounded by walls? Uh, you're inside the tent. You can't see what's going on outside, but you've heard incoming shouted. And these little runes have hit a pattern through the top of a tent and then just, like, mm -hmm. affix your chest, and you feel, ooh, powerful. Yep, you've been blessed. Okay. We'll head outside. Uh... Just sit right here. And she's going to use Twilight Tendril, but is going to do it in a way where you can't tell it's coming from her because it doesn't mm -hmm. use any gang signs and words. So um, <laughs> <laughs> so she's okay. going to lift up the closest baddie from the sage and yeet him 10 feet back. Okay. Uh, go ahead and hit that. Remind me how that works. All right. So that's a saving throw that this one has to make. And it should be 2d6 because I'm at level 5. Uh, That's is true. That 2D6? Yeah. No, it's 1d6. Oh, Go ahead and roll another d6 and we can fix it later. We'll fix it in post. Yeah. All right. And I don't have any... Oh, hold on. Uh... Nope, never mind. I'm just going to roll this saving throw. Uh, strength, right? Yeah. Yeah, strength. Okay. DC 16. That is not a success. Uh, four damage and gets yeeted 10 feet away. Uh, six damage, yeah. Six damage, thank you. Is that it for you? Uh, I don't think I care about any bonus actions right now. Let me just double check. Yeah, I think I'm good for now. Okay. The Phoenix Knights uh, immediately run inside to protect Marison. That said, reinforcements are on the way. Down below, you can hear the Phoenix Knights charging into battle as they rush to meet the assassins. And let's see. Yeah, three attacks. I'm not going to roll all these dice. I just want to do one round so I can see what's going on with them. 16 to hit. Okay. So they charge into battle for Zaylar. They are going to try to hold back as many of these people as possible. Now it's Elnau's turn, and then I'm going to defer to Athalor. I'm going to bump Athalor up and demote the stage. I think the guy who got hit was, uh, was not the one concentrating on Sly. Correct. The one concentrating on slow is oh uh, my bad <laughs> here and is no longer concentrating on uh, is greater invisibility a concentration spell? That is a DM question. I'm fine. DM right now. DM. Ask DM. DM. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. It is. So that one is also no longer invisible. Not that it matters inside the range. I can. <laughs> All right. 
El now is going to step out of the tent, leaving the bodyguards to their business, and look over and see, oh, look, nerds. <laughs> and... Am I able to retcon and put myself in front of the sage as yeah, like a can, bodyguard? Yeah, you can do that. All right, she's going to shout, Garnet, be careful. And she's going to hit the first one that she sees with a magic missile. At level... Mm, hold on. At level fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what level's that? Uh, level three. Oh, it didn't let me upcast that. Oh, well, it just adds... Oh, no. Yeah, I just roll this a lot. Oh, wow. All right. She fires five bolts of magic, all of which automatically hit. Seven, 10, 11, 14 points of damage. Blam, 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 blam. All right. She's not particularly uh, impressed with herself on that, but that will do. Athelore, go ahead and start taking your turn while I figure out if I have any bonus actions. Uh, Athelor shouts to the five academy wardens here. Mm -hmm. uh, they're after a personnel in the tent. You must protect them. And then uh, I only get one action or bonus action. So uh, yeah, so you actually said they're rough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I only get one action or bonus action, and I've got no health and basically no magic. So I'm going to use another one of my spell slots to misty step and just sort of like. Uh, get close to the edge of a tent because I figure if I go in there, these guys are probably going to stab me. <laughs> and I don't want to get stabbed, baby. <laughs> you know who I don't, didn't roll in? Pevon. Oh, poor Pevon. Actually, Athelor kind of... Uh, I'm actually going to have him TP himself into the midst of the wardens. Okay. Into the fireball formation. Perfect. <laughs> anything else? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, nope. Well, I can't do anything else. Slowed. Okay. Wow. Wardens move in. Stop right there. Two of them are going to go block the door, and the others are all going to engage. Oh, duh. Ignore me. All right. The beatings will continue until morale improves. By combining <laughs> their attacks, these two are able to to, to slay this Othotlo Slayer. Just, Hooray! We are going to beat you to death. Corpse number one, baby. It is now the Sage. And after that, I'm going to promote Ariana. And demote Untermaller. Oh. Okay, well. I cast so Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> like. Okay. Wait, how do I ping? You can click and hold to ping, or you can use the ruler. Or, option three, I can give you a Fireball and let you park it wherever you want. Oh, give me the Fireball. <laughs> give me. All right, please stand by. I need to deploy the fireball and then move the fireball to its optimal size. Oh. Is this correct? Uh, that is correct. And now I need to give you control of the fireball. This is now your fireball. Mm -hmm. Make sure to feed it and uh, potty train it. All right, you, you cannot alt drag it. So no. it has to be lined up like with prop. That, that is properly lined up right there. Uh, that okay. is going to blow up, blow a hole in the tent. Are you? Can okay I with move that? out of the tent first? Yeah, I mean you have to because right now you can't see out there. So if you shot a fireball, it would just hit the wall and detonate right, right here. True. Yeah. So I guess I will exit the tent. Okay. Go ahead and move up to thirty feet. Over by. Wait. So five. Ten. They said five. Ten. I'll go here. Okay. And, and you're going to cast a fireball very, very close. <laughs> very close. So you can feel the heat surging from you. What could go wrong? She I mean, nothing. Special. You're not Honestly. a wild mage. You're fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. Uh, click that fireball spell for me, please. 
Oh, it's you low love damage. You love to see. Actually, that's kind of kind of not great numbers, unfortunately. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Only twenty-one. I mean, it's area of effect damage. We we always like that. And you force a con saving throw from the uh, slow guy, which is and you do. Very and um, I blew my save on the assassin. So the assassin's gonna take half damage because he has evasion, because he's like that. And now I'm gonna roll four more saves from the rest of these guys, one of whom has Bardic Inspiration. Okay, four dexterity saving throws. Dex save one. Success, dex save two. Success, dex save three. Success, oh, dex save four. These, they're, they're assassins, they're basically ninjas, you know? Dexterity is what they're good at. That said, they don't have evasion. They all take the damage in the face. They're all significantly weakened. And you blow a hole in the side of the tent, and Untermaller is going to roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh, shit. Oops. <laughs> all fine. these damn kids and their fair bones. <laughs> He's fine. Back in my <laughs> day, you did five minutes of trigonometry to make sure no one was in the blast radius. <laughs> well, you guys didn't teach me that. I was born this way, so... <laughs> Aria, <laughs> Garnet said like high five and guess slay queen. Yes, slay. <laughs> Actually slay them. <laughs> All right. So he's just standing there minding his own goddamn business when a giant fireball goes off and singes him for 21 points of damage. And the fireball is now gone. And there's a whole a concentration check. Damage. And yeah, let's do a concentration check for the slow effect. Do, 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 do. Constitution. Constitution. Oh yeah, baby. Freedom right. is ours. You are no longer slowed. It is time to fuck. It is time to <laughs> fuck. Is that it for you, Ariana? I think so. Okay. Yeah. The sage is going to cast sleep. Ooh. And it's her mega sleep. Because uh, she's a sleep specialist. She, once per long rest, she can choose to roll maximum on all dice. And oh. sleep is normally, what is it? 5d8? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would be 40. And she needs more than 40. And how many extra dice do I get for every level? I don't know if I can pull this off entirely the way I want to. Night, night. Just bring the BBEG to save your mom. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. Uh, yeah, she'll cast a level four sleep spell and choose to maximize it as that glowing blue light flares through the area and instantaneously knocks out these three Bothotlo Slayers. Just zonked. Oh, that one's going to get very stabbed to death. Untermaller, noticing that there's a big freaking hole in the tent, which is going to expose... Um, oh my god, did you not roll in either? Did Marisan not roll in? Well, I'm rolling Marisan in. She's noticed the hole in the wall. She is this. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> she rolls for initiative. Yes, he was like, I, was, I wasn't going to raise a hand before, but now you've messed with my tent. <laughs> that was uh, my favorite tent. This is my favorite tent. This is my party tent, god damn it. The fire right. is a party. <laughs> I'm and all set of these tent. ninjas are invited next time it's one Bonsai? of your turns I'm going to set this on fire <laughs> hmm, let's see let's see let's see you know what this is an old favorite uh, but I don't think he can afford to do that right now he didn't he again didn't pack his death spells because he's used to just managing the academy so he doesn't normally like load out all of his I am here to kill you spells uh, but he does have a staff of power, and it is loaded up with charges. So he's going to. We have a number of stream loose cards that I will be resolving momentarily. Oh, yeah, no, perfect. <laughs> he's going to use the staff of power to cast Wall of Force Ooh. around. All the VIPs. Uh, which, let me, let me set this thing on fire. But then, yeah, he's just going to raise a force field, essentially. 
and stay inside of it and dare everybody to come after him because he has an impenetrable force field. All right. The Bronthan Fire Keepers, the priests, are going to charge uh, into battle just to slow down these assassins over here, keeping them pretty easily at bay. And finally, finally, the assassin gets to go. And the assassin has been thwarted by the Wall of Force. And furthermore, the assassin went dead last and can't use the assassinate ability. So we're just going to do what we can do. And what we can do is rush up to Garnet, who's directly in contact. And stab the crap out of you. Holy sh with a poisoned blade. Garnet. Wait, I can use reactions now. You can use oh, reactions no now. <laughs> I keep forgetting you... about my no magic now. What do you <laughs> Alright, so no, nothing from you, nothing from anybody? Does anyone have anything that they can use to do stuff? I don't have silvery bobs bullshit right now. <laughs> I use my silvery barbs bullshit for your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a no plus. No reactions. <laughs> hmm. Twelve. What's happening? What's the twelve? Uh, if you did, you use silvery barbs. Do you have no. silvery barbs? Oh, I well, used it already. Right. Well, then you just got stabbed. Uh, Damn. Do you know? I'm, oh yeah, you don't have spell slots, warlocks. Uh, let me let me think real quick. Uh, wait, mm -hmm. I use my luck die to make him re-roll his d20. Then I'm gonna take that second roll I rolled, which is the twelve, which means I missed. Ah. As for the assassin on the other side, yeah. let's see. Mm, that wall is a problem. Why do these defensive camps keep having defenses? I know, right? It's so inconsiderate. <laughs> this is so sad. This is so sad. Yeah, you have cover. Just out of reach. Damn it. None of these people matter. Oh, you know what? I'll, let's just kill this priest, okay? Let's just kill this priest. <laughs> Take this, Zayla. Damn! A oh, natural damn. 20. Holy crap. Okay. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. Shit. That kills the shit out of that priest. <laughs> a, a poisoned crossbow bolt buries itself just thunk, and the fl the fl the fire keeper of Zalar dies with <laughs> frothing at the mouth from the poisonous attack. Uh, at least I did something. <laughs> it's Pevom's turn. Pevom is inside of the Wall of Force. And he immediately tells Inril, let me out of this. She's she's out there. I just got her back. Let me the f out of this goddamn force wall. Because <laughs> uh, he can't do a whole lot else, I don't think. Garnet, you're going to be... Vibes? You're going to be up next after some uh, villainous villainy. Yeah, there's nothing he can do right now. That sucks. <laughs> the good news is Hold we up. marked for targets earlier for the ballista. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's about to fucking suffer. You will now enter a world of pain. All right. Uh, you know what he's going to do? He's going to move here. No, he can't. This is the only... Oh, no! There's a huge gaping hole in the in the tent. Okay. <laughs> he's going to position himself here where he can see Garnet. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, you can watch her die. No! Exactly. <laughs> no! All right. Character arc! <laughs> the Bronson soldiers... Hey. Wang! They fire a ballista bolt. At the Bothotlo Slayer on the mountain. There is a meaty thwack. And as a siege weapon pierces directly through this just human. And sends him flying off the edge of the map. Very, very dead. Athol feels a bit of smug pride. 
Uh, you want Shigun's bullet? Tower of War. Tower of War. Huh? <laughs> I'll consider it. And then these guys are going to fire at the assassin who just nuked them. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that 40 turn, that 80 turn. Is that Chris Kyle? American sniper over there? Oh, so the assassin God. walks over and slaughters this oh, firekeeper. And oh, the Bronthan soldiers just point this ballista at him and fire it directly in. And just there's a crack as it pierces ribs. And there's a, a slight cough as the air is forcibly punched out of its lungs. And yeah, massive damage, uh, critical trauma, death. Death is instantaneous. I have to move you over here in order to give you the... All right. This one down here can't angle all the way up there. So the rest of the Bronton soldiers are just going to move into position to join the fight. And I will roll for them later. Well, I'll roll for you, them, two of them now. You bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to hurry up so that you guys can actually play D&D, &D, you know? Like, I'm, I'm not, this I'm not trying to... This is the D&D. &D. <laughs> I'm doing my RTS D&D &D right now. This is StarCraft yep. edition. Right? Well, then I should give you control of all these units. Um, maybe <laughs> I should have done that. All right, they're going to attack with their pikes. And they deal radiant damage when they... Oh, that's very unlucky. One of their pikes broke. <laughs> oh, my pike. Uh, you know what? Action surge. <laughs> New I just made it up. My sources. <laughs> my sources that I made it the fuck up. <laughs> No, actually, they do oh. have action surge because Bronton soldiers are badasses. Unfortunately, I think a 14 still misses. Yep, a 14 misses. All right, so they poke him with a stick. It is now the Bothotlo Slayer's turn. Three of them are asleep. One of them, there should have been another one over here, and I can't find him anymore. And there are three over here, one of whom has... No, there's only two because one of these is an assassin. Well, they're certainly not... Oh, no, you're alive. They're certainly not giving up at this point. One of them moves outside of the wall of force. Just kind of looking at it and trying to figure out. Okay, I know what he's doing. He's going to cast reposition. And he teleports all three of these people inside the tent surrounding Marison. I use counterspell. Okay. They don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the spell snuffs out. Uh, they were over here. Yeah. You know what? Hold on. Can I just undo everything I just did? Pretend none of that happened. There we go. Okay. All right. So you use counter spell. Uh, they noticed that. This Bethotlo Slayer is going to give the assassin a bardic inspiration die. And then this Slayer. Oh, no. Pikes. That's right. The Pikes. Mm. All right. Well, yeah. This one's going to try to stab you. For your insolence. What? Oh. Oh no. Oh no. I need to get some of these cards done. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah, there's a particular one that's gonna come mm -hmm. out of God and get stabbed. Mm hmm. You've created a hole in me. I'm gonna create a hole in you. Jarna, what's your armor class? 11. Okay. You have now been stabbed for eight points of piercing damage and roll a constitution saving throw. Don't I have uh, bonuses for that? You have advantage yeah, on 1D4. that. And you have advantage from Bear's Endurance and plus 1d4. So go ahead and roll that. And then 1d4. Mm -hmm. 1d4 is going to make it a success. So okay. you don't take acid damage from their acid-laced uh, blades. However, I'm also going to use my psychic blades attack which burns one use of bardic inspiration and inflicts an additional that's terrible six points of psychic damage okay three two one <laughs> how injured are you not very injured <laughs> okay you're not below half very... health right that's right you're the no. tank okay <laughs> so i don't know you've right. got Stop trying to hit me and hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Garnet, would you... Ra oh, no, that, this other Slayer gets to go. All right, this other Slayer is going to move here and then immediately trigger the Bronton soldiers because they use pikes, special reactions. Which is basically saying, lol, no. 
Mm, doesn't enter their reach. Uh, leaves their reach. Okay. So one does. One does, and he doesn't get to use his special reaction because it's like they they can set against a you know against a charge, right? Oh. Mm. Oh. Okay. Ow. Who's that for? All right. Well, oh, I'm still. Okay. And if I move here, I'm still within reach, so I can get away with that. Uh, unlucky. Could have got the flank. Oh, yeah, you've got movement left. Let's, let's go for the flank. Let's get the advantage. <laughs> and, and this one is going to attempt to stab the crap out of Garnet. With that? advantage. Corrosive wait, blade. Go ahead. Wait, why advantage? Because they're flanking you now. Son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. That is a successful stab. Roll a constitution saving throw with advantage, please. Three and then... Uh, constitution with advantage. Uh, I will Ooh. use my inspiration from chat to re-roll that. Okay, roll one additional roll. Oh, come on, big blast. Mm, roll 1d4. Uh, I don't think that's going to save me. It could. It did oh. not. Uh, okay. What about your 1d8 inspiration time? Yeah, I might need that. Actually. You can burn that if you want. I mean, it's almost 9 o'clock. Yeah, it's got to be used in the next five minutes. Let's go! All right. <laughs> yes, you avoided. So the way this works, if it ever actually happens, when you fail your save, you take acid damage, and it stacks, so it keeps melting you. And if they keep hitting you, the acid damage continues to stack. The entire plan was to jump on Marison and just stab her until she's full of acid and dies. I mean, there was some more to this plan, but, you know. Uh, and I'm going to use my Psychic Blades. Oh, just fucking come on. Have an additional 13 <laughs> points of damage. Okay. That's a little math. One and uh, Okay. Are you below half health? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Confidently, yes. <laughs> okay. Kevon casts safe transposition. Oh, oh. And he swaps with you. Oh, no. What's up, bitches? I heard you were hurt hitting my girlfriend. <laughs> Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Garnet, you are now trapped inside of a wall of force. And because you of your me? and because of your successful efforts earlier, you are uh there's no there's no villains in here. Okay. Can I cast can I still cast it outside of the because it's only line of sight? It's a it's a well it depends on the effect. It depend it depends on what the spell is. This is one creature I can see within range. A twilight tendril. Mm, one creature you can see within range. Because yeah. he could see me in this position. Mm -hmm. So I could probably... Let me let me read the twilight tendril real quick. Here, I'll post it. Yeah, oh, drop wait. it, please. It doesn't say that the tendril has to come from you. Yeah, it's come out before. Now, Garnet, as your body withers and your mind recoils from these attacks and you see Pevom leap, teleport you out of harm's way and put himself in position. You feel a fire welling up within you and a dark chasm yawning at your feet two powers, the paradox that defines you, pulls you in each direction. The power of the void, ready to punish these people who would take your mother from you after all these years being apart from them and destroy them for their insolence, or the power of the Sunrider, now that you are reunited with the people of your birthright. They are both calling to you. You can reach out and sees one of them. What does that mean? Does that mean I have to give up something in exchange? No, it's 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 extra power available to you. Uh, but you can only pick one right now. Okay. Well, while so to make this a little thematic, she will mm -hmm. take her Bronthin hand, place it on herself. Cast healing hand on herself, look back at her mom and says, I'll protect you and we'll choose the Zalar power. Okay. Go ahead and give yourself that healing. Yeah, what's up? 
Be cool to twice my level so I get 10 back. And you can use the Blinding Smite spell. On your next spell attack, as long as it's not a shadow or dark attack, you can... Mm, do you have any of those? A, sh a what? Any non-shadow, non-void magic that you could use on one of your foes right now. I have, like, message, minor illusion. <laughs> message of a blinding smite. <laughs> Die, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no attacks. You have a call from Zayla. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. I have copperhead languages. <laughs> identify. All right. Can we, let's, just say you can reach, let's just say you can reach out and touch somebody. Who, who do you want to unleash this power on? Who's the person who stabbed me last? Uh, the person over here. That guy. Okay. Roll 4d8. Okay. The light of the sun pierces through the fog from above directly into this would-be assassin's eyes. The light flares for a moment and then bursts in all directions. That assassin falls to the ground. That Bethotlo Slayer falls to the ground, and the assassin and the slayer immediately adjacent are struck blind by the light. And that didn't cost you any actions. Wait. Your call means a lot to Zayla. <laughs> Where's the there's the blinded icon? All right, uh, you used your action to heal yourself. The searing smite was, uh, the blinding smite was free. Was there anything else that you wanted to do? Am I allowed to hold a bonus action? No. Okay, never mind. Well, I'll be, I'll position myself in the window to see what the fuck's going on. Okay. Whatever that line of sight is. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. You have that line okay. of sight. Okay. The two Phoenix Knights who are locked up in here are just gonna maintain defensive positions. And the two Phoenix Knights down here, one of them is going to execute the Sleeping Slayer. Nice. Just instantly stabbed. The other one is going to run up to the other Slayer and the, the Academy Warden says, oh, da, 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 da. Phoenix Knight looks the Academy Warden in the face, raises the war pick and just punctures it through the assassin's brain. There is a splattering uh -huh. sound. Uh, I think that's it for them. Yeah. It is Elnau's turn. Elnau is a little bit confused about where her protege went. <laughs> Who's she, this guy? <laughs> but she's going to go ahead and fly up into the air. Oh, no, this guy's super dead. That's right. Super dead. <laughs> is this one of the ballistaid ones? Yes. Well, no, this is the one that got stabbed. The ballistaid ones are like out the edge. Make it uh, dead. <laughs> she's going to go ahead and fly up into the air. Spot a target. Uh, let's see. Pevon, he's probably fine. Um, Ariana is in the line of fire. So we'll go ahead and, and attack that one. And she's going to cast Enervation. Bolts of black energy lash at forward from... Mm, no, that's, that's overkill. We're not going to do that. Can I, what, what's the range on voice strike? Can I voice strike? Did I program that correctly? She should headshot the ones that are blind so she gets advantage. Mm, no, they're kind Smile. of taken care of. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn, I mm. missed. I really should have shot the one that was blinded so she could have advantage on it. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she have bless? She does. Oh, have she bless. does. I don't know if that helps. Plus 1d4, baby. Uh, do you know what else she has? She has the high ground because she flew straight up. So she has the advantage of the high ground. So I am going to go ahead and do a reroll on that, which should be plus 10. I don't know why it's only plus seven. So, yep, that'll hit. So she unleashes the power of the void on this guy. While you're calling on Zaylar, she is more than content to keep on drawing on void magic. And I think there's a kicker on this, which is the target is frightened of her until the start of her next turn. I need void strike for that. <laughs> Athelor, it's your turn. Uh, I swap my initiative with Ariana. Okay. 
Uh, normally I don't allow that, but in a big fight like this, uh, <laughs> I don't Tag. see why not. Because normally, team. the only reason <laughs> I normally don't allow it, trip. the only reason I don't normally allow it is because there's specific class features that let people do that. Uh, uh. So if we had one of those characters in this scene, I would say that's not allowed because you're you're stepping on their toes. Ariana, you are once again suddenly up. What would you like to do? <laughs> Ah, well, I'm out of fireballs. <laughs> you get you the, mm. the moment you get fireball, and now suddenly it's like oh, I can't fireball. Nothing to do. Sorry, folks. You got this. Yeah, yeah. I'm tapped. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. I'll see you for tomorrow. You, but, mm. uh, There's a slayer I, directly in front of you. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna scorching ray them in the face three times. Okay, Ooh. that seems legit. With bliss, is she blessed? Uh, she's blessed, uh, doesn't. Is she blessed? Uh, I think so. I think I blessed basically yeah. everyone. Okay, and, roll and one like four and add level. it to that 13 that you rolled. Ooh. You're going to kablam him. He's the one that's in my face. So. Mm, a 14, so that missed. He oh, uses... wait, no, no, I have a inspiration die, right? You from do, that's right. You have earlier. a D8 inspiration die. You're the only one who hasn't used yours YOLO. yet. YOLO. Wait, I have a D8, so I just roll the one D8. Yeah, roll one D8 and add it. Can't keep it. <laughs> Hi -ya! A 15. Oh, princess ones. Their armor class is 16. That's incredible. No <laughs> shot. That's mad, dude. That's wild. Oh man. So also the so the first one would be a hit, except that this Bothotlo Slayer is blinded and can't do that. Never mind. Uh, you should hmm. have advantage on all three of those. Oh. <clears throat> Oh, right. just give it to her. Just give it to yeah. her. Yeah. Blam, blam, blam. Hey, should I do more? Oh, I got that one. That one was good. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yep. Those oh. seem to be... Does uh, 23 hit, Nimes? Normally, I get to do that. All right? Normally, I'm the one who does that. All right. The blast goes through, and the, the assassin, the would-be assassin, goes flying. Goodbye. <laughs> Anything else from Ariana? Nope. So I'm going to stab something. On his turn, his... he's at the bottom of the initiative order. The only reason he got to do that then is because that spells a reaction. Ooh. Okay. Let's see. So. Oh, mom hasn't even attacked yet. Either. Oh, let's go, mom. She's going <laughs> to move. Big chilling. She's going to move up to the front and say, Pavon, go! And she uses direct ally to let him make an attack. Oh, yeah. And so he That's is cool ability. He's going to attack. See, do, do, do. He's going to use two weapon attacks with his uh with his weapon. With the weapon. What is the and garnet hit with? And these are advantage <laughs> cuz the person is uh yeah. Oh, it actually is dead! Yeah! Wait, I do no damage. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm shit. Wait. <laughs> and he right. is going to do a level two smite. Ooh! Which means he's going to add an additional uh, 48 radiant damage. No, fire damage, because he's a Phoenix Knight. He can do that. Additional 48 fire damage. Okay. Is that a paladin thing? Yeah. Sick. He's a. He's a. Paladin. I think it's a combination of Paladin and something else. Uh, all right, so that is a total of 10, 19, uh, 39 points of damage. Cutting the crap out of this assassin is one of the leaders. And then Marisan is going to use a bonus action to use. Let's see. I'm plugging to this music, dude. She's going to use Rallying Word, calling everyone forward into battle. Uh, Garnet, you immediately heal. 18 health. Oh. Ooh. And Athalor, you can hear her, so you're going to you're gonna heal. Uh, Mama approves of me. Oh, back <laughs> Thanks, Mom. You're going to heal 19 health. Oh, that is so good. And that'll be it for Marison. Athelor, it's your turn. Uh, right. Also, line the spotlight to this guy. Vague. Uh, blocked by the force, the wall of force. 
Ah, okay. So. And that's oh, an, a I've, virtually I've impenetrable have, barrier. I appear to have left that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can go here and cast... Uh, uh, can you go Hold one over? The dead. Oh yeah, that's that just requires line of sight. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You don't need to. You don't need to roll a hit. Hell, with that. hell yeah! Told the dead baby. Ding dong. <laughs> ding dong. The, the, the spell I've got. <laughs> ding dong. Your brain is gone. <laughs> and that's a wisdom saving throw already. On your fifth level too, so it's two d eight or two d twelve. Oh, but I saved. Uh, uh, I should have. I'm gonna lucky dice him down. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna roll again. <laughs> I got a natural 20. Oh my god. Damn. So lame. Profoundly All right, unlucky. I'm tapped. <laughs> all right. Sorry, guys. I'm out. Well, I've done I all that I can do here. <laughs> <laughs> my work here is done. <laughs> the academy wardens are going to flank this blinded assassin and subdue them. Not dead, but they beat the crap out of him. Uh, let's see, this warden is going to go ahead and move over to this assassin and yell at the Phoenix Knight to say, we've won, we need prisoners, the threat has passed. The two of them look at each other through their armor and glare for a moment, and the moment passes. The sage steps over all of them and stares out into the fog to the north. as if waiting for something, holding up her lantern and gathering magical energy around her hand as she watches. And from the darkness, through the fog, as the last of the assassins fall, a voice calls out, in the infernal tongue. Uzul, Uzul, Uzul. And the ground cracks. And dark runes well up in blood. And something begins to emerge from within. An enormous scaled hand grabs onto one side grabs onto the other side and begins pushing its way up as a fiend is conjured directly before our heroes which obviously is my signal to go ahead and end tonight's episode so oh. you know. Damn. <laughs> We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. TPK, baby. Sorry about that, I'm, folks. It's, I'm glad we bought the BBEG. <laughs> I'm glad we went through two battles, two spell slots. I've used them like. <laughs> I can spare one. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Sorry we didn't get through all of these cards, but maybe play them next time. I think they're going to be needed. Oh, hey, you can have a short rest immediately. Oh, oh. my spells are back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bless. You do yeah. this. Ooh, and we, we hit uh, 30 on stream loot cards. What does that put us? At 30, do I do another act of God? Yeah, I do another act of God. Oh, the whole. I'm gonna refund any cards we didn't play, but I'm gonna Thief of Luck. Great, great. I think this is the one that lets you give people bad luck, but you immediately get bad luck afterwards. All right, we're gonna roll that into the next episode. Uh, hopefully, Mason will be able to have been here the whole time and just magically arrive, or have his own. We do. We did have that mirror card that got pulled at the very beginning. So, Treadnought can always turn up. Like I know where they are. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you everybody so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Book of Dawn, Ayath Academy. Bye bye.